Good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning, good morning everyone. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song to pay. I got myself. I am your worship. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today. Good morning, bless you, bless you as you come on in. And the sacrifice. I have more than a song to pay. I brought myself. I am your worship. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. God bless you. Good morning.
Good morning, good morning. God bless you, everyone. Leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my father. Good morning, good morning. Bless you. YouTube and Facebook. How to do? I want to stay. <laughs> God bless you guys. Thank you for joining me this morning. And I want to celebrate you all that tuned into our week of services last week lotgi is 10 and we celebrated that by having a week of services i pray that you were blessed i was blessed yeah i was blessed i was encouraged i was challenged and i honor god for what god is doing in light of the gentiles international and uno uno big up on yourself <laughs> Big up on yourself. You are one of the reasons why we do what we do. And we thank God for the grace that has been extended towards your life. The impact, the change that you have experienced through this ministry. And go on rock with me now. 
Yeah, man. Go and rock, go and rock with it for some more years. <laughs> yes, go and rock with us. We are purpose to do with the Father's will. And we are purpose to be about our Father's business. So let's continue to grow and win. Light of the Gentiles International. Crescere et vincere. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's not tongues. That's Latin. All right, that's that ain't tongues. Some of y'all be like, "What she just said a while ago?" Crescere et vincere. It means to grow and to win, and that's what we're gonna continue to do. Amen and amen. Go ahead and share. Wake some people up. Why are them sleeping? Go ahead. Wake up some people. We are going to jump straight into it this morning. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your divine hand upon our lives. We thank you for yet another morning, another morning to celebrate you, another morning to hear you, another morning to seek you, another morning to encounter your goodness and to encounter your power and your majesty. Have your way this morning in jesus mighty name amen and amen all right morning again everyone good afternoon good evening whatever time of the day it is god bless you so i'm going to finish what i started last week tuesday so last week tuesday for our week of anniversary i preached on the year of maturity right the year of the of maturity and I spoke about the significance of 10, which represents puberty. Child, well, mostly girls going into puberty. Boys start at 11, but it's an age where puberty begins and the child begins to transition from one phase to the next. Spoke about that. That's on YouTube. You can go and look at that. But I want to pick up where I left off. I want to talk about the mature believer. I want to talk about the mature believer. It's important for us to walk in maturity as believers. Why? Mature believers get things done. Mature believers, their mindset is on God's God's will and their purpose to do what God has called them to do. We're all called to get to a level of maturity. But let's get into it. The word mature means mentally and emotionally well developed, therefore responsible. I spoke about responsibility last week in that sermon. I'm going to read that again. To be mature, it means mentally and emotionally well developed therefore responsible when you begin to step into maturity there is a level of responsibility that comes upon you which direction am i heading how how am i going to pen out purpose what is god ha what has god called me to do what's my assignment what's the destiny what 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 should i be flowing in in this season what should i be doing doing in a particular season when you begin to flow as a mature believer your heart begins to collide with god's heart you are about your father's business your mind is shifted from the carnal your mind is shifted from the natural and you are purposed in your heart to do your father's business think about a babe when you have a newborn child only thing that newborn can do is just get up and cry sleep drink milk there's not much care about growth there's not much care about development because the child is a babe so it's your responsibility to nurture that child until they get to that age and it's the same with thing with us god expects us to move from one stage to the next and sadly some of us we have been in church for years and we're still babes and i want you to know your time on the usher board your time on the deacon board does not equate to growth your time Time, the amount of time you spend in church and you're there at church from your yeah, there, your knee, that does not equate growth. It's the things that you have put in place that causes you to grow in the word of God, that causes you to grow spiritually, right? So your time at church doesn't equate to growth. The how long you've been saved does not equate to growth. Growth is more than that, right? We, we have to quantify growth in a different way. We can't quantify growth like that. So I'm going to read this passage of scripture, 1 Peter 2 right chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 it says verse 1 wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and guile and hypocrisy 
pra. Oh, hold on, I'm reading the wrong thing. Hold on, is this verse one? Yeah, it's verse one. So it says, therefore, laying aside all malice, all guide, guile, and hypocrisy, and envies, and all evil saying, verse two, this is the key verse, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that he may grow thereby. This is the King James Version, right? As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that he may grow thereby. The word of God has the ability to minister to you at every stage. The word of God has the ability to minister to you at every stage. What am I saying? So if you are a newborn believer, that means you just stepped in the faith. You just accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The word of God is able to minister to you where you're at right and i want to i want to highlight this and the reason why i want to highlight this is because we are at different places spiritually we are at different phases spiritually right not all of us are we are not all of us are at that place of maturity some of us we are newborns some of us we're just coming into our teenage stages right we're at different stages of maturity in god think about the development of, of a child and the different stages a child goes through until they walk into adulthood it's the same thing with us we're all at different places spiritually but one thing about the Word of God the Word of God is able to minister to us at every stage so if you're a babe the word got you if you're a you're an adolescent the word got you you're, your teenager got the word got you got you you're an adult the word got you no matter where you're at the word of God is able to minister to you there right so here the Bible is highlighting how the word is milk desire the sincere milk of the word you give baby milk right so the word is milk to the new believer the word is milk to the new believer but let's continue in first corinthians chapter 3 here is brother paul talking but i brothers could not address you as spiritual people but as people of flesh we're gonna we're gonna dive into the scripture and, and dissect it but people of flesh as infants in christ i fed you with milk not solid food for you were not ready for it so here is paul saying to the believer I fed you with milk not solid food because you were not ready for it so here the Word of God can be can be equated as solid food I, I hope you're following me so in first Peter right chapter 2 it spoke to the word as being milk and now in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it is making reference to the word as solid food. So this is why I say, no matter where you're at, the word of God is able to minister to you. The word of God is able to feed you, right? So if you're a babe, the word will be your milk. If you are an adult, you are more mature in Christ, the word will be solid food for you. When a child is growing, you begin to wean them off milk and you begin to introduce different foods to them, right? You begin to inter, inter, introduce different food to them. So the word is not only milk, but it's also solid food. But here, Apostle Paul is saying, I fed you with milk not solid food for you were not ready for it when you think about a child that is at a particular age and they should be eating solid food as a parent you become concerned why does not my child want chicken why the child don't want to eat the fish why the child don't want to eat the irish why the, the child don't want to eat the crushed pumpkin the child just want milk you become concerned that the nutrients that they should be getting they're not getting it because they're still taking a particular diet when they should have grown past that that is the same thing with us some of us we're at a place where we should be eating solid food but we're not there listen if you just came in i am talking about the mature believer 
I am talking about the mature believer because God is waiting for the church to grow up. God is waiting for individuals to move from that infant stage to the next. And listen, I am not talking about people that just got saved. I am talking about people that has been in church for years, decades. You have the badge for it. You have, you have the trophy for the longest standing member in your church. You've been at your church from your church start, right? You've been in church in a, for a while, but your mindset is still at the baby stage. And some things that you should be eating spiritually you're not there. I remember years ago when I just got baptized. Got baptized in a church overseas and Dr. Miles Monroe came to preach to the church. And I was a new believer, right? New believer. There were some things I still not I still didn't understand. But I know that God called me. I love sweet Jesus and I accepted him as my Lord and my Savior. And Dr. Miles Monroe came to the church. If I tell you what that man preached, I will be lying. <laughs> if I tell you now what he preached, I would be lying. And I mean by all indication. To the more mature believers. It was a good message. And people were cheering. And people were listening. And you know the anointing was there. But I don't remember the sermon. I don't remember anything. And one of the reasons why I don't, I don't believe. I don't remember every, everything rather. Is because where I was at spiritually. What he was saying was flying over my head. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> whoop. So he was preaching some deep things and I did not get some fundamental things. There was some fundamental things that I did not know. So I couldn't follow his preaching. And this is the truth. When preachers begin to teach deep, we begin to lose people. People that are, are not at the place they should be. You can equate my, what happened with me was because where I was at spiritually and there was some teaching that I was lacking. But when, what, what, I want you to follow me, but when you have believers that are seasoned, when you have believers that are seasoned and preachers care, you can't follow a preacher when they go deep because you're lacking in the word. You're lacking in understanding. You're lacking in the fund fundamental things. That's a concern. That's a concern. I was a new believer. But you have people that has been in church for years. And if your pastor should go deep, you're lost in church. Everything that he says, it goes over your head. And you've been saved a minute. You've been saved a while. You've been seated in the church for a while. But guess what? What begins to happen? It's only the message that riles you up. You follow. When oh them bad mind you, oh them a hold you down, oh this person obey you, oh your neighbor fight you, you follow, you are following. But anything that causes you to go deep in the word of God, oh preacher, you miss me here. Listen to me, God is calling the church to be mature. God is calling the church to grow up. God is calling the church to move from one dimension to the next. If you are at a place where you are only drinking milk and you've been in God for a long time, baby, it is time to grow up. He is looking for a mature church and I'm going to go into the importance of maturity in a bit. He's looking for people that's willing to develop. He's looking for people to move from one dimension to the next. Here the apostle Paul said, I had to feed your milk. I had to feed your milk. I couldn't give you solid food because you were not ready for it. You were not ready for the solid food. And it's not that you are a babe, but where you're at spiritually, I have to give you milk because the solid food will choke you. 
you should have grown past that place you should have been at another dimension but you are not there so as a result of that i have to substitute what you should be eating to something less i have to change your diet you should be my god you should be eating hard food but you are not there that means there's something there's something taking place in your development there is a gap in your development and because there's a gap in your development what i should be giving you i can't give you because there's a gap in your development what i should be feeding you i cannot feed you god is calling the church to a place of maturity and i want you to follow me because this church in corinthians they had a problem with the flesh and i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you why i say that first peter 2 when it says wherefore lay aside all malice guile hypocrisy envy and all evil speaking let me tell you something if we're still at this place we're immature if we are still at the place where we're keeping malice we're hypocrites we envy we bat, we backbite we're speaking evil we're immature believers we are immature believers you listen there's a particular mindset that you expect from a babe there's a there's a particular out view of life that you expect from a babe because they're growing up so what they value you know because of where they're at you understand okay you're at this age so you're gonna look at things like this okay you're here you're you're at this 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 fundamental stage so you're viewing things a, a, a bit different than a, some than someone that is more seasoned and mature you expect certain mindset from them but i want you to know that as you get older there are some things that you have to put away as you get older there are some things god expects you to walk away from as you get older there are some mindsets that god expects you to move away from so here the 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 the, 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 the author is saying move away from this these things malice guile hypocrisy envy evil speaking and instead instead of that begin to desire the sincere milk of the word listen to me it is the word of god that causes maturity it is the word of God that causes you to grow up. It is the word of God that causes you to develop. If you are going to become a mature believer, you have to be a be believer that loves the word. If you are going to be a mature believer, you have to be a believer that stays in the word and allow the word to change you. Allow the word to shift you. Allow the word, my God Almighty, to cut the areas in you that needs to be cut. Allow the word to sever and destroy the flesh. First Corinthians, let's go back there. First Corinthians, they had a problem with the flesh. They were carnal. These, these people were car carnal. Verse 2, when it says, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Let's continue. And even now you are not ready yet, for you still, you are still of the flesh. Listen to me. When you allow your flesh to rule, it affects your growth. I'm going to say that again. When you allow your flesh to rule you, you it affects your growth. Why? A mature believer allows the spirit for the, those that are led by the spirit. They are sons of God. We are supposed to be led by the spirit. When we are spirit led, we move to that place of growth. When we are spirit led, we move to that place of maturity. When we are spirit led, we move to that place of development. But the church here, they were carnal. And because they were carnal, it affected their growth. My God from Zion. Because they were carnal, it stunted their growth. Watch this. For there, for, the, for while there is jealousy, here, here it is again, strife among you. Are you not of the flesh? So when you're bickering and you're arguing and there's strife and there's malice and there's envy, are you not in the flesh? You did that when you were in the world. The world does that. The world fight against e each other. The world envy, the world jealous, the world backbite. This is what they do. So when you are in God and you are operating like that, you're actually an immature believer. You're actually a babe. 
Let's continue. For when one say, I follow Paul, and another say, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? <laughs> Verse 5. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. Listen, when you are flowing in, in, in immaturity, the things that are trivial, that's what you focus on. You're losing sleep over carnal things. You are your Debra Koshanda. You're losing sleep over natural things. You are warring over carnal things. You are fighting over carnal things. So when we're fighting for position, when we're fighting to be seen, when we're fighting for, for platforms, when we are fighting for doors, I need this door to be open, and you are willing to push someone that is at the door as well. You are willing to backbite someone. You are willing to destroy someone to get at a particular place. Are you not in the flesh? When you are flowing in hypocrisy. When you are flowing in malice. When you are malicing your church brother and your church sister. When you refuse to make amends with those that have, that have, have offended you. When you hold offense dear to your heart. When you are walking in, 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 in envy. When you are malicing, are you not in the flesh? These are the very things that affect us from growing. These are the very things that affect us from developing. So these believers, the, oh Paul, follow Paul, follow, follow apostle. No, these men are men of God. Some of you, you're, you're, you're caught up over preachers. And it becomes idolatrous. You take your eyes from God and you are focused on the preacher. Let me, let, me, let me show you how dangerous idolatry is. If your focus comes off God and it's solely on a man. Listen, I preach honor. We should esteem leaders. I am a heavy believer in honor. My church preaches honor. My, my husband has a book on honor. But when you get to that place where you begin to idolize that man of God or that woman of God if that man of God or that woman of God should fall your feet fall with them at the brush kabahaya if that man of God and woman of God should fall your feet fall with them why you have made them idols you have made them idols so it moved from honor to idolatry so if they should fall your entire faith will crumble. And the reason why it will crumble. Because Christ was not the center. Paul said. Follow me as I follow Christ. So it is Christ through them. That you should be following. You are honoring them. You are you're, you're following them. But ultimately it is the God. That is in them. That pulls you. It is the God that is in them. That, 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 that swings you. To that direction. So, we cannot make idols out of man. And this is what they were doing. He said, I they were saying, I follow Paul. I follow Apollos. And Paul had to put things in perspective. And say, listen, I planted. Apollos watered. But God gave the growth. In other words, focus on God. It is immature when you are looking to a man and not God. You're looking to a man. Your faith is wrapped up in a man and not God. Your faith is wrapped up in a man and not God. We have to seek him as well. We have to pursue him as well. We have to go after him as well. So although we undergird our leaders, although we honor our leaders, although we esteem our leaders, it is the God in them that we're ultimately following. It is the Christ in them who is the hope of glory that we are pursuing. So we are looking to God, the author and the finisher of our faith. And as they follow Christ, we are following them. But who is the center? Christ is the center. Who is the head? God is the head. Christ is the head. Right? And they were walking in carnality because they were caught up in trivial things. My God Almighty. Who, who is the best preacher? 
Who is the best teacher? Who is the best evangelist? Who is the best is who is the best apostle? No, you are getting it twisted. You are getting it wrong. Focus on the kingdom. Pursue the kingdom. Esteem the work that they're doing. Honor the work that they're doing. Undergird the work that they're doing. But do not make them idols. I remember in a particular area in the Bible, I think it's in the book of Acts, where the apostles, they went in a particular place and the people, they were bowing. They were bowing and they said, listen, no, 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 we're, we're men. Don't make idols out of us. Don't, ha, uh, don't make idols out of us. It is God. We're men just like you. And the truth is, the, the anointing, if people are not delivered from idolatry, when you see the, the flow of the anointing, you begin to flow in that. You begin to flow in idolatry. When you see God using a man of God and a woman of God in a particular way, if, if you are not delivered from idolatry, you will begin to meet them idols because of what you're seeing them flowing in. But this is, this is important that we move from that place of carnality because it is truly carnality when you shift from god being the center when you start to think about it's just your job it's just your family it's just your marriage it's just your career you are operating as a babe you are operating as a baby christian the mature be believer knows that christ is the center the mature believer knows that Christ is the focus. The mature believer knows that it is the kingdom of God that I should be focusing on. It is the things of God that I should be focusing on. It is the will of God that I, sh I should be focusing on. And it is important for us to get to that, 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 state, that stage of maturity. Because when you are mature, you are able to do greater. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When you are mature, you are able to do greater. Jesus called 12 and he poured into them. He poured into them. He developed them. And this is how growth comes. Growth comes when you allow your leaders, watch this, you allow your leaders to pour into you. And not only allow your leaders to pour into you, but in your own time, you are allowing the Holy Spirit to pour into you. That means you're in your word, you're in worship, you're fasting, you are seeking God on your own as well. So you're being poured into from every angle. This is what Jesus did with the 12. He poured into them. Why? There is a work that is going to be there that you need to accomplish. There's a work that is there that is going to need individuals to stand in the gap to get done. So I am pouring in you. I am giving you teaching. I am giving you revelation. I am explaining the things of the kingdom to you and on top of that, I am giving you power to tread upon serpents, upon scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy. I am laying hands on you. I'm empowering you. Why? The work needs that empowerment. The work that I am about to push you in, it needs that level of development. Listen to me. Some of you, you're unable to do the things that God wants you to do because you are underdeveloped. Because you are what? You are underdeveloped. He, Paul said it. I want to give you hard food, but I have to give you milk because you're not ready for it. You are not ready for the milk, so I have to be giving you. You're not ready for the solid food, rather. So I have to be giving you, giving you milk. I have to be giving you milk. Because what? You're not ready. I feel God stretching people this morning. I feel God stretching people this morning. Your purpose requires your development. Your purpose requires your growth. Your purpose requires your maturity. You cannot stay as a babe forever. You cannot be at that infant stage forever. If your child is not growing, you are concerned. A matter of fact, if you realize that the speech not coming in, they're not saying mama, they're not saying dada, they're not walking, they're two and
and they're not walking. They reach one plus and they're not walking. My God Almighty, they're, they're, they're at eight months, seven months, and they're not creeping. Creeping, you become concerned and you begin to cry, carry that child to the doctor to see what's going on. It's the same thing with us. God is concerned that you're not growing. God is concerned that you're not developing. Developing. God is concerned that you're not at the place that you should. And as God is concerned, you must be concerned as well. Because the truth is, some of us were at a place and we don't have a problem with it. We're at a place and we don't have a problem with it. You are, yeah, 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 yeah. you are at a place and you don't have an issue with it. I remember years ago when I went to a church, we just started ministry and the church, people were casting out demons. People were laying hands on the sick and they were recovered and individuals were flowing in deliverance and people were being set free. And when I got there, myself and my husband, we were provoked. We were provoked because we were not doing that. We were not casting out no devils. We were not laying hands on nobody and nobody was being healed. We were not there. And that provoked us. And the truth is, some of you, you are not provoked. You are comfortable being normal. You are comfortable being average. You sing the song, but you don't believe it. You sing the song, I want to be more than an ordinary person. You want to be more than an ordinary Christian, but you do not believe it. You do not. It's not a, it's not a posture of your heart. When it becomes a posture of your heart, you begin to position yourself for growth. When it becomes a posture of your heart, you begin to say, God, God, how am I going to get from this place to the next I remember when I was playing church and I said God I can't continue like this I can't keep slipping like this I can't be at the altar every single Saturday at the time I went to a Saturday church a church of God seven day church of God I cannot be at the church every single Saturday repenting for the same thing when am I going to grow when when am I going to grow when when shall sin no longer have dominion over me? When, when am I going to get to that place where I do not have to come to the altar repenting of the same thing? I was concerned. I came to provoke somebody this morning. I came to provoke somebody this morning. I came to trouble somebody this morning. My God Almighty, I came to stir God ambition. You have ambition for your job. You have ambition educationally. You have ambition financially. But do you have spiritual ambition? When, my God, when you have spiritual ambition, it's a sign that you are a, my God, that you are a mature believer when your mind is on the kingdom when your mind is on your purpose when your mind is on the will of God it's a sign that you are a mature believer can I tell you this you can be advanced in the things of the world but not immature with the things of God you can be advanced you're a supervisor you are a CEO you're up there in your profession but when it comes on to spiritual things you are a babe my God Almighty you elevate you are a babe. Some of you, you are forsaking the by God. You are forsaking the king, the things of God, to pursue growth in other areas. You are yeah, 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 yeah. You have forsaken the things of God to pursue growth in other areas. Some of you, you step away from church because I need to pursue my edu education. Why can't you do both? Why can't you do both? It's a, it's a sign of immaturity. When you are willing to walk away from the things of God to pursue natural things, it's a sign of immaturity. When you are willing to walk away from every position that you have in the body to pursue something that is natural, it's a sign of immaturity. And some of you, you will rationalize it and say, oh, I'm just trying to develop myself. But you are developing yourself in the expense of your spirituality. You are developing yourself in the expense 
of your spiritual growth. You are developing yourself in the expense of your purpose. So why can't you do both? Why can't you still latch on to God and pursue your education? Why, 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 why do we have to, watch this, why do we have to sacrifice the kingdom for the natural? It's a sign of immaturity. It's a sign of immaturity when you have to sacrifice the things of God for the things of the world. Why? Your degree, your degree will hold no, no weight in eternity. Le bradada, a sign of a mature believer is that their mind is on eternity. A sign of a mature believer is that their mind is on life after this. Their, the sign of a mature believer is that they're not just thinking about here, but they're thinking about eternity. Matthew 6, chapter 6, 19 to 24. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on the earth, wherefore moth and rust destroy. And where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures. Treasures where? Treasures in heaven. Wherefore neither moth nor rust destroys. And where thieves do not break in and steal. This is the key verse, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there, there your heart also will lie. Listen to me, what's in your heart? Your heart will tell you where you're at in God. Your heart will tell you where you're at in God. Some of you say, we, we, I don't know where I'm at. Am I mature? Am I immature? What's the posture of your heart? Your heart, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. your heart will dictate where you're at. What do I mean by that? When I finished college, in, when I finished college, when I was overseas, I had the opportunity to, to work. Got my work permit. Got the opportunity to work. What did I do? I sought the Lord. A matter of fact, before graduation, I was seeking the Lord. Do I go home? Or do I stay in America? I didn't have to go home. I wouldn't be illegal. They gave me time to work. And watch this. The, the, the natural man, the carnal man would say, you are in Uncle Sam. Land of opportunities. Make some money. Gather some money, then you go back home. Gather some money, work, go back home. But I was thinking about God's will. I watch this. I wanted God's opinion. The natural man, the carnal man, the immature man will say, I have this opportunity, let me just run with it. But the spiritual man, the mature man, will say, God, what are you saying? Listen to me. If you are at a place where you do not see God concerning important decisions, you are immature. I'm going to say that again. If you are at a place and, 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 and look at the posture of your heart, if you get an opportunity and you say, sure, I don't have to pray about it. I don't have to pray about it. I don't have to seek God about it. Listen to me. Some of you, the reason why you don't seek God about it because you don't normally seek him. You don't You don't normally seek him. So, if the opportunity look, looks good, you say, yeah man, it's God. And you run with it. But, when you have a heart that says, God, I want your opinion. I want to know what you have to say about this. I want to know your input regarding this. That's a sign of maturity. Why? You want to hear what God has to say. You value the opinion of God. You don't want to go around in circles. You don't want to miss God. The mature believers do not lean on their own understanding, but in all their ways they acknowledge him and he will direct their path. It's a sign of maturity when you are willing to seek God concerning everything. What do you have to say? I am not going to just latch on to this because it looked good. Yes, it looked good, but is, is, it, is it God? The, the enemy appears as an angel of light. The fruit, 
it was good for the eyes but it was something that god said don't eat of it it looked good that's what the bible said it looked good to the eyes but there was a word do not eat of it do not touch this you will surely die listen to me a sign of a mature believer is one that is willing to seek God to hear God I sought the Lord sought the Lord concerning do I come back to Jamaica listen to me if I was overseas I don't think I would be in ministry and I wouldn't have met my husband some of the things that I'm doing now I would have missed God and I watch this I would have missed his timing I would have missed his timing some of you you are underdeveloped because you have missed the time clock of God there was a specific time for you to press into some things and you missed God a child eat why is my eight, why is my eight-year-old not reading why is my eight-year-old not comprehending there's a gap in their development. Some of us, that's what's happening. The time in which we should have been developing and growing, we missed that. But I thank God for grace. My God Almighty. I thank God for grace that even though you have missed some things God is able to bring them back around. God is able to bring them back around. God is so gracious that there is, there is a timing where he's able to bring that very thing back around. And I feel, and I feel God doing this. I feel God doing this in some of your lives. Where you have said, I have missed God. I have leaned on my own understanding. I have walked away from God. I have stepped away from God. Some things that I should have done, I did not do it. Listen, grace is extended to you this morning. Can I, can I borrow something from, from my mentorship? It is not too late to be great. It is a Lebron de Lebroshka Bahaya. It is not too late to walk in purpose. Your latter shall be greater. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Your latter shall be greater than your former. It is not too late to be great. And I, yeah, 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 yeah. And I feel God pouring grace upon his people this morning. Ah, I feel God releasing grace to his people. Those that say, I feel as if my growth was stunted. I feel as if I missed God in certain areas of my life. It is not too late to be great. And my God, and grace is being extended to you. The grace to develop, the grace to become, the grace to walk in purpose. Caleb said, give me this mountain. I am old, but I still believe the promises of God. I am old, but I am still able to walk in the promises of God. David wanted to go at the front of the battle, even being in all age because David still believe I want to minister to somebody this morning they think that their their age and also their mishaps has caused them to be written off no you're not written off God is doing something in your life grace is being extended to you this morning to walk up purpose grace is being extended to you this morning to grow to crochet Vincere, grace is being is, uh, God is being poured out upon you uh, to grow and to win in the mighty name of Jesus. How do you grow? You get in the word. You get in the word. You order the braka shata. Stop missing Bible study. St stop not taking notes when you are in services. Stop not taking notes. You should have a book for the word. You should have a specific area in your phone. If you're using your phone to write out the sermons and the scriptures. Listen to me, man. You have to be intentional about growth. When it comes on to the kingdom, 
You don't, you don't just wake up and, and, and just spring up. No, there is a deliberate effort that is necessary for you to grow. Growth is not spontaneous. It is deliberate. If you are going to grow, you have to be deliberate about your growth. If you are going to be a mature believer, you have to be developed. You have to be, you have to be deliberate rather about what you feed yourself on to become who God has called you to be. If your mind is on the things of the world, according to Matthew 6, it's immaturity. You're carnal. If your mind on your money only, your job only, listen to me, there's enough space in your head for you to think about both. Stop swapping the things of God for the things of the world. Stop swapping the things that will build you spiritually for the things of the world. Let me say this. You will have the things of the world and miss the things of the kingdom. But when you have the things, when your mindset is on the things of the kingdom, the things of the world becomes automatic. Prosperity becomes automatic. Wealth becomes automatic. Increase becomes automatic. Promotion becomes automatic. Divine help, it becomes automatic. Seek he first. But you are swapping the things of the kingdom. And guess what? It causes you to be a spiritual dwarf. It causes you to be a spiritual dwarf. So you're, 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 you're growing in other areas. But your growth is stunted spiritually. Why? You have swapped kingdom things for natural things you have switched you have switched the things of the kingdom for the things of the world and as a result of that you're not growing why your mindset you can know a mature believer by their mindset what are they focused on what do they value? Do they value the things of God? Do they, do they value the things of God? Do they undergird the things of God? Are they willing to, to sow into the, king, the things of God? Are they willing to put their resources in the, 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 the things of God? I remember a couple years ago, somebody told one of my sons and this person was a believer <laughs> believe it or not somebody told one of my sons that he should not use his camera for church he should not use his equipment in the heights of pandemic where the church was closed and everybody had to go to live stream this believer told my son not to use his camera for the church. Where is your mindset? When you are not willing to partner with the church, when you are not willing to partner with the kingdom, it says a lot about your maturity. It says a lot about your growth. It says a lot about where you're at spiritually. When the church cannot get your resources. When you're not willing to pour into the church. When you're not willing to give up your skills and your abilities to the church. It says a lot about your maturity. Me? Me not help them. Me not, me not, me, me not help them. Make them figure it out. Me? Me, me, them, them, them all right. Them no need me. Aren't you good in admin? Yes, I am, but them no need me. Don't you have connections? Can't you help the church? Yeah, yeah, but nobody na asks me. And if nobody na asks me, me na give me myself. You are carnal. You're the brother Bakashata. You are carnal. You are immature. You are a Babe, and you need to grow up. Babes think like that. 
Babes think like that. Me, me nagi. My money, my money, I have to do something else. Listen to me. I have given money to the kingdom of God and the house of God. Money that my mind was set on. This money is for this. This money is to do this in my family. This money is to establish my family certain way. And the Holy Spirit said, give it. The Holy Spirit said, give it to me. And I gave it multiple times. Multiple times. Multiple times. Even the other day. God pushed me again to give a major seed. Listen to me. When your, your, your eyes are fixed on this world. When your eyes are fixed on the things of this world. It will stunt your growth. It will stunt your growth spiritually. Your mindset is not kingdom. Your mindset is not on eternity. That's a sign of immaturity. No one wants to be called immature. If some of you people should look at you and say you're so immature. You take offense. You will, will take offense. It's, if somebody should look at on you and say, you, 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 how you deal with that situ situation like that? You're so immature. Your mindset is so immature. You would be offended. So why is it okay for you to accept that you're immature spiritually? Why, why is it okay for you to accept that you are a spiritual dwarf? Your growth is stunted. Why are you okay with that? If somebody tells you that you're immature, you would take offense to it. So why are you okay with being stuck spiritually? Why is it okay with you being stuck spiritually? Another sign of a mature Believer, Philippians 3, 12. This is my final scripture. And I'm out of here. Philippians 3, verse starting from verse 12, 12 to 14. Not that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I press. Hold on to that word. We're coming back to it. But I press. I press on, rather. That I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Let's continue. Brethren, I do not quote myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do. Forgetting. Hold on to that word as, as well. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Listen. Paul did a lot. Obtain a lot, walked in a lot, unlocked a lot. But hear what Paul says. Not that I have already attained or I am or I'm already perfected, but I press. The sign, one of the signs of a mature believer is your willingness to press. Your other brother la Bahaya, your willingness to press. Your willingness to keep showing up after the disappointment. Your willingness to keep showing up after what you prayed for. You never, you never receive it in the time period that you wanted it. Your willingness to press when the job is pressing you. Your willingness to push when life is, 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 is crushing you. Your willingness to show up. To, to show up for God when all hell broke loose. Your willingness to continue to pursue your assignment in God when all hell is ag ag against you. That's, a, that's one of the signs of a mature believer. The willingness to press. The willingness to keep going. But I press. Press on rather. That I may lay hold of for that which Christ has also laid a hold of me. So in other words. No matter what I'm, 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 I'm pursuing. Why? My focus is not on the things that has happened. 
My focus is not on the failures, but I have a, a prize. My eyes are fixed on something. For Paul, Paul wanted to grab a hold of the very reason why Christ grabbed a hold of him. Why you save me? Why you choose me? Why you blind me on the road to Damascus? Why you call me as an apostle? Why you call me to your people? I want to grab a hold of what you saw in me. So I am pressing. Paul's eyes were fixed on God. That's a sign of a mature believer. When your eyes is not on the people. Your eyes is not on your current circumstances, but your eyes is fixed on God. I am pressing because I must grab a hold of the reason why he called me. I must grab a hold of the reason why he saved me. What is his purpose for me? What is his will for me? That is what I'm pursuing. My mind is fixed on God. Paul had something that he was working towards. Paul had something that he was working towards so irrespective of the noise irrespective of what was going on he was pressing listen to me if you are going to allow people for you to walk away from God it speaks to carnality it speaks to immaturity your eyes has to be fixed on Jesus your focus has to be God you have to have tunnel vision God his word, his plan, his purpose for my life. That's what I'm pursuing. I, I, I'm not seeing anybody else. I'm not hearing anybody else. I am pursuing the things of God. Let's continue. Right? Verse 13. The latter part of verse 13. Watch this. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Some of you, you're stuck. Because you're in a the coulda, woulda, shoulda. I shoulda do this. I, I wish I had do this. You're stuck in the past. And because you're stuck in the past, it's affecting your growth. Because you're stuck in the past, it's affecting your, deliver, your development. You're stuck in what could have been. You, some of you, you're stuck in your mistakes. You're stuck in your failures. But here is Paul. Because growth comes when you're willing to forget those things. The things that happened. The past mistakes. Even the past achievements. Because some persons, they are stuck in their achievements. You have made your achievements a landmark. So you're unable to achieve anything else. Because you have allowed yourself to be buried at that place of accomplishment. So, some of you, where you receive the congratulations is actually the same place you receive the burial. Because after that accomplishment, you stop dreaming. After that, the same place where you were congratulated is the same place you were buried. Because you stopped believing after that accomplishment. You stop believing after that achievement. You stop believing after that goal was achieved. So the same place where you had victory is the same place they buried you. Because after that victory, you stop believing for more. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. After that victory, you stop believing that I can do more. I can become more. I can achieve more. I can walk into more. God is calling you to dream again. God is calling you to hope again. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. God is calling you to go again. Do not be stuck in the former glory. Do not be stuck in the former accomplishments. But let's continue. He said, forgetting those things which are behind me. But watch this. I am reaching for those things which are ahead. A sign of a mature believer is one that is, that is willing to pursue more. There is more. There is more. Oh, da, 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 da. There is more. I can become more. I can walk in more. I can achieve more. I can do more. I can see more. I can demonstrate more. I can manifest more. There is more. Father, I give you praise this morning. I give you praise this morning. 
I give you glory. I thank you for your people. I thank you for your word. And I thank you that this morning you're calling us to a higher place. You're calling us to a higher dimension. You're calling us to a place of transformation. You are calling us to a place of growth. You're calling your sons and your daughters to maturity. Where we have allowed our, grow our own growth to be stunted, we repent. Where we have allowed our own growth to be stunted, we repent. And we ask for your forgiveness this morning. Move upon us. Rele brande le brande le bekora bagazanda. Move upon us. Rest upon us. Let greater desires be stirred in us as Paul pressed because he wanted to obtain the very thing that made you call him and purpose him. I pray that we will press. Press to that mark of that higher calling in you. My God, stir up desire. Stir up hunger stir up a desire for the kingdom stir up a desire for the things of god stir up a desire for the will of god stir up a desire for the kingdom of god stir up desires this morning in the mighty name of jesus and let the fire of god burn in the hearts of the people let the fire of God burn in the desire of the people. My God Almighty, may they step away from that which is not lasting. But may their eyes be fixed on eternity. On eternity. On eternity. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, God is doing something in your hearts this morning. God is doing something in your hearts this morning. Some of you, your growth has been stunted because of offense. Offense stunts your growth. Where you should be growing, where you should be partnering with other believers. Offense causes you to say, okay, I'm going to be a loner. I'm just going to seek God by myself. I'm just going to do this by myself. I don't want to go back on a church. I don't want a church. I don't want a pastor. Listen to me. No, 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 no. That's the works of the flesh. The flesh causes you to be stuck spiritually. But when you are willing to allow the Holy Spirit to move through you, to heal you, to transform you, you begin to view things from his perspective, which is a kingdom perspective which is an eternal perspective father move over your people today rest upon your people today and may they move from carnality and walk in the spirit as we give you praise and we give you glory in jesus name amen and amen god bless you believers thank you so much for joining me this morning if this message bless you i want you to go ahead and share share if you're on facebook go and go ahead and share this live if you're on youtube go ahead and share this link with somebody god is calling his church to grow up god is calling his church to grow up he's calling us to move from one dimension to the next let's put in the work to grow and to win in jesus name god bless you woman stay loose all my all my ladies woman stay loose is right around the corner july 4th to 6th we are going to be in jamaica july the 13th we're going to be in florida those of my partners and my friends that's overseas go ahead and register and join me in florida for woman stay loose 2024 for july the 13th those of you in jamaica we have three days about five different services it's going to be a packed three days why we're ensuring that you align to ascend that's our theme for this year align to ascend and i want you guys to come out partner with us and be a part of what god is doing it's going to be three days of transformation we have prophetess cecilia all the way out of texas we have my spiritual mom out of new york we have worship leader david victor awesome man of god that's going to lead us into a time of worship we're going to be releasing the time 
schedule this week so that you know that when you can join in terms of the days that you are available i know that some of you have work but if you're overseas for jamaica you can be a part of our virtual encounter we're going to be live as well on zoom so all of the information is there on spuropen.com slash wsl it's going to be three three days of transformation deliverance and we are ascending together we're aligning to ascend all right so i want you guys to be a part of that we have our sweaters that will be released this weekend so when that is released you can reach out to us if you need a sweater if you're overseas that can be sent to you at so reach out to us at lotg international at gmail.com or woman stay loose network at gmail.com all right and be a part of what god is doing get your access passes and join us for woman stay loose conference 2020 Four, if you're not following us, go and follow Woman Stay Loose YouTube, Woman Stay Loose Network YouTube channel, and also Woman Stay Loose Facebook and Instagram. All right. Love you guys. Shalom. Join us tonight for Bible study. And I'm going to be live on Friday. I'll be doing some lives on Friday. So I want you guys to join me live on Friday at 1 p.m. Yeah, 1 p.m.